Hello everyone, I'm Dan Colbert, again bringing uh, you the fifth in my series, The Songwriter's Notes on Songwriting. Uh, finally, we're going to get past uh, talking about the harmonic structure of song, which we've been talking about for since the beginning, for several weeks, and get into uh, some other elements of song. Today I'll be talking about rhythm and a little bit, we'll just start to talk about lyrics and particularly how they relate to uh, rhythm. So thanks for hanging in there with me. I felt it's important to establish kind of the foundation of your song, uh, i.e. the harmony, before getting into other elements. Um, and believe me, we could talk for many more weeks about just harmony alone, but uh, Let's be satisfied with uh, what we have for the moment, and we can start to talk about other elements uh, of, of uh, building a song. So, um, as a backdrop to what we'll get into today, which is the more relational aspects of these song elements, I want to say something that's going to sound really obvious, um, but there's a point I want to make about this. Just as a watch is made up of non-watch elements, you can say the same thing about a human or pretty much anything else you can think of. So is a song made up of non-song elements, okay? Uh, the four basic components um, of a song are, generally, are harmony, rhythm, lyrics, and melody, okay? Uh, kind of funnily, uh, given how much time we've spent on harmony so far, in other words, your chord progression, uh, that's the one of these four that can least stand on its own. Um, but the point here is that if you're writing a traditional song that has all four of these elements, uh, they come together in a somewhat describable and yet somewhat ineffable way to create a complete song. Um, it's a classic picture of uh, a case of the uh, whole being greater than the sum of the parts, my picture in my mind is you have these kind of four, uh, four circles, um, each corresponding to one of these elements, and uh, you kind of maybe work on one at a time. Again, right now in the way we're doing it, we're working on harmony, the chord progression first, and then today we'll talk about bringing in some rhythm to that, and, and uh, beginning with lyrics, and then finally we'll talk about melody. But my picture of this process is that these four kind of are slowly sort of creeping together and, and in the end they just kind of fuse together to make a whole thing. And our job as songwriters is to work that process, okay, uh, to shape these parts into a whole. So I'll continue to talk about these separate pieces out of necessity, because it's sort of the only way to talk about uh, about them, about songwriting. But from this point forward, I'm going to try as often as I can to emphasize the relational aspects between and among these uh, four elements. And today we'll start with uh, rhythm and lyrics. We're going to get to rhythm a little uh, later. First, I want to talk a bit about rhythm. In particular, how do you generate uh, rhythm for your song. Now, I should, I could say five times in each one of these talks, you know, and so I do want to emphasize from time to time, there's no right or wrong here. Do what feels right to you, okay? Um, again, I don't want to be prescriptive about this, and if I sound at all prescriptive, um, please know that that's not what I'm intending. Um, you should Follow your feelings and your heart, and that usually will produce something good. It still is, there are, um, to traditional Western songs, there are, and Eastern songs for that matter, there are kind of um, uh, guideposts and, and boundaries on things that traditionally make things sound um, coherent and uh, pleasant to the ear. Um, so anyway, as I said in the first episode, I'm, I'm assuming that you are going to begin with the music and lyrics follow after, although I'll talk about the reverse process uh, later. 
So for what follows, uh, let's assume you have a chord progression, in other words, harmony. Where then does rhythm come from? And I have a few thoughts about this. First, and maybe most important, as I keep repeating, is, is the, this point I keep coming back to, fool around on your instrument. Uh, there's no substitute. Just start playing something. Even if you strum quarter notes, you've got a rhythm. I have a song. Uh, you can find a link to it in my uh, in the comment uh, pinned comment below, called "Borderline." Um, that just repeats eight notes, okay, over two chords uh, for essentially the whole verse. Okay, the chorus is a little different. Um, so let me just play that for you now, and you'll see how simple it is. I mean, it's hard to get simpler than that, although I will point out that on each of those two chords, I'm doing something a little, I'm elaborating just a little bit. On the A, you know, I'm, I, I have some emphasis, right? Uh, first of all, the, the first two eighth notes are played on the bass strings and the last two on the uh, treble strings. And, you know, I'm really emphasizing uh, the uh, first beat and the third beat, okay? And on the D, it's actually a D6 to a D. I'm doing that little hammer thing. And I'll talk about this a little bit more, okay, as we go along. So, you know, you, it's, it's great to start with something really simple. You can always kind of elaborate with hammers and pulls. Uh, on the guitar with grace notes if you're playing the keyboard, okay? Uh, you might, on the guitar, you might elaborate with some upstrokes, for instance, or, or um, you know, uh, this was all down, down strokes, but, but you could go... Right? Upstrokes brings in a different rhythmic element. Palming uh, on guitar... Same chords, but just a different rhythm using a little bit of technique. I don't have a lot of technique, but there's a couple little things that you can do that can really um, uh, elaborate and make much more interesting your rhythmic structure of your song, okay? It doesn't have to be fancy or complicated. Follow your mood of the moment. It will lead you somewhere, okay? Uh, and keep in mind that uh, as other elements of the song come together, you know, as we move those circles towards one another, um, each part will start to kind of tweak the other parts, okay? And you may revise the rhythm, for example, in ways inspired by these other elements, just as other elements may be inspired by your rhythm, okay? And I encourage you not to think too much about what you want to do. Don't, don't, uh, I mean, I'm sure it works sometimes, but I don't think it's an overall successful strategy to go into uh, sitting down at your instrument intending to uh, work on a song with some definite intention. That doesn't work for me, is basically what I can tell you. Um, you know, it doesn't work to think to yourself, I want to write a song with a funky beat. Well, usually that'll t take you into some cliché beat or rhythm. Um, and more importantly, you're not really expressing yourself in that moment by doing that. So allow yourself, my advice is, allow yourself to be expansive. Take the lid off and let it come to you. Now, I understand that if you're stuck, it's not really helpful to hear someone say, let it come to you. But it really is true. If you're thinking too much, if you have a specific intention to sound a certain way, 
that usually is a trap. Uh, that's what I've experienced. Be open to whatever possibilities your mood takes you in. Uh, I've had a few experiences of dramatically changing the rhythm of the song from what I originally had, but only a very few. And usually these were more about changing the tempo than the rhythm or the meter itself. Songwriting is more than anything else I think about authenticity, expressing yourself authentically, like any good art is. And thinking tends to get in the way of that. Neil Young, one of my heroes, talks about this all the time. When an interviewer asks him about this or that song, he responds by saying something like, yeah, that one came from a real place, by which he means he didn't think about it. It came to him naturally as uh, an expression of his, uh, his feelings in that moment. So don't think too much. I'm not going to talk about the rudiments of rhythm. I'm going to assume that you know about these. Mainly, we're talking about meter and tempo, okay? Um, as I said, experimenting with tempo is something that can really help to gel your song uh, and really bring it to life. I have a, a, a song, an older song of mine, that uh, I was playing, um, I don't know, 64 beats a minute, let's say. And uh, I brought it into a band setting one day, and the drummer said, hey, can we try to speed it up? And we sped it up to, again, I don't know, 78 beats a minute, substantially faster. And uh, it really took off, okay? So you can play around with that. Meter tends to be trickier, okay? Uh, since often the chord progression, and more so the lyrics, work integrally with the meter of your song. I'll talk about that um, more in a minute, that integration, but I, I just want to mention here first that I have changed the meter of a few of my songs after I thought it was established in a different meter. Um, and when I talk, when I say meter, I'm talking about like um, what the time signature is, 4-4 four, four time, 3-4 time, like a waltz, 6-8, that kind of thing. For me, and your mileage may vary, it usually, when I've changed the meter, it usually goes in the direction from 4-4 four, four to either 6-8 or 3-4 time. Many beginning songwriters stay in 4-4 four, four time. It's called common time for a reason, okay? But these other time signatures are really wonderful. 6-8 uh, is a real favorite of mine. Um, and uh, as you advance, you can e even explore exotic meters like 5-4 and 7-4. Um, uh, the, uh, the Pink Floyd song Money is in 7-4 time, for instance. Most of it is. Um, and I'm, uh, I have yet to write a 5-4 or 7-4 song, but I really, it's something I kind of want to do, but I'm not going to force myself. As I said before, I'm not going to sit down with the intention of writing a 5-4 song. If the other elements or my mood drive things in that direction, it'll happen, and that's fine. Okay. One thing I left out in talking about harmony that impacts on rhythm was incorporating little flourishes into your progression. For guitarists, these are often in the form of what we call hammers and pulls. So, for instance, I think last time I talked about, when I talked about suspensions, I talked about suspended fourths, and I demonstrated with an A sus4. <laughs> okay, so you can see that already introduces just the fact of your hammering and pulling off that uh, sus4, that string, introduces a rhythmic element. So be aware of that. As you develop your chord progression, you may well, as we talked about last time, introduce those suspensions, the twos, fours, sixes, and the sevens that we talked about, uh, and you may work with them on the guitars, hammers, and pulls on the keyboard as grace notes. Um, these are important 
potential with well they're important rhythmic elements period okay they can't help being rhythmic in their own way and sometimes I've found that these uh, hammers and poles themselves just by themselves can establish a rhythm for a song and I'm gonna just play a little bit of my song Moonlight which again you can find a link to in the comment below uh, that uh, the whole thing is established by these hammers and pulls. So here, here's a little bit of it. Okay, so you get the idea. These, so this is a deep connection between the, um, the harmony of a song, the chord progression, and little elaborations of it, and the rhythmic structure of your song. So it's good to have awareness of that, I think. Uh, in fact, that kind of device can sort of push a rhythm. Uh, sometimes there are also elements of melody. If you listen to this song, Moonlight, which I hope you will, uh, those, those little hammers and pulls that I just played really help to push the melody, to define the melody. Um, and, uh, finally, just a remark about that. It's, a, this is a, a, a pretty basic example of what I mentioned at the start about different elements of a song coming together to create something new and original. Okay. Now, before I go into that, uh, issue further incorporating uh, lyrics, uh, I want to bring up one last technique for generating rhythm in your song, uh, which is copying. Okay. Now, none of us who are interested in being original artists really want to copy, and that's an overly provocative word for what I really mean. Probably a better word is emulate. Okay. And if you're an honest artist, meaning you're determined to make more or less original art, you're unlikely to blatantly copy something outright, okay? Maybe a lick here or a phrase there, but um, my point is that uh, even if you start playing something by somebody else, it's going to be filtered and transformed through you, resulting in something new, or at least new-ish. Um, and I've said this before, but there's a certain advantage in not having all the technique in the world. Because what that means is I don't have the skills to copy someone as well as I would want to if I had any intention to copy what they're doing. Okay. I mean, simple things I can, but, um, you know, anyway, I don't have much interest in that. So let me give you a, a personal example of, of, of a song that kind of came out of um, some emulation. About a year ago, I happened to listen to a song that I've heard a hundred or more times before, Joni Mitchell's uh, great song, Coyote. Uh, there's a link to it in the comments below. Actually, I was watching a documentary where she was teaching Bob Dylan and Roger McGuinn uh, the song in Gordon Lightfoot's hotel room. So that's, that's kind of pretty cool to watch. Um, they were all sitting on the floor. Anyway, I was kind of entranced by what she was doing rhythmically, especially she was kind of moving her, her fretting hand uh, up and down the, uh, the fretboard, okay, in a, in a very rhythmic way. Uh, and that kind of uh, just uh, spoke to me, okay. And later that day, I sat down not really to play her song, but to look for that kind of feeling of, of the song, that sort of rhythmic back and forth, up and down the neck. And I just started to play two chords, one down at the end of the neck and, and the other uh, in the middle of the fretboard, with what felt to me in the moment was something kind of like what she was doing. And this became one of my uh, more rhythmic songs, uh, Fear and Greed. And again, there's a link to it in the, um, in the comments. And I'll just play just uh, the beginning part of it for you, which is really all I need to illustrate. And, you know, 
It's not going to sound anything. You listen to Coyote and listen to this. They don't sound... You wouldn't, you wouldn't say anything about them sounding like one another, okay? I don't think. Um, but maybe with the comments I've just made, you can, you can hear a little bit of the origins of my song in Joni Mitchell's song. That's it, okay? That's, now that, that is a rhythm. <laughs> There's rhythmic structure there that I carry on into the rest of the song. That's just the beginning. Um, that I got from, you know, kind of emulating another song. But it doesn't sound like that song because it, it flows through me. So, so I, I'm encouraging you to not... You don't have, I mean, you can, you, you never have to emulate anyone, but it's okay to. A lot of people, I think, get a little bit shy about that, oh, I'm going to copy someone and I don't want to, and blah, 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 or steal something. Don't be afraid to emulate. Uh, again, after it's channeled to you, it's going to sound uh, different. And, you know, if it does sound too much like uh, what you're emulating, walk away and come back to it later in an in a different mood and it'll probably sound different okay so i want to come back now to the interplay between different song elements and this is a theme again that will dominate the rest of this series i start i'll start now with the interplay between rhythm and lyrics and uh, i'll be talking much more about lyrics as a standalone element in the next episode but right now since we've just talked about rhythm i want to look at the interplay between lyrics and rhythm. A key point um, is that your lyrics need to have some rhythm, uh, rhythm themselves, okay? I won't be getting bogged down in the technicalities of this, but we all learned in school about iambic pentameter in Shakespeare and others, other poets. The first word, iambic, refers to a unit of syllabic stress. Iambic simply means da-dum, 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 okay? And uh, the word pentameter just means that it has five of those units in a line, okay? That's pretty much the only rhythm that Shakespeare used. You'll, you'll want to mix things up more in your songs. Uh, another... Um, type of foot, which a foot is the kind of that uh, syllabic uh, unit, um, like iambic. Another type is called a trochee, and it's the opposite of the iamb. It goes dumta, dumta, like garden or tiger, okay? The stress is on the first syllable. You can look up others. This isn't, I don't, I, I don't want to go deeply into this. As for Meter, most often you'll have between three and five such feet, iams or trochees or whatever it is, uh, in your line. Okay, the syllabic units are called feet. You'll have typically three to five of those. You can have different meters for verses and choruses, um, but some structure is good and almost always present in songs, okay? There are certain, I guess, free form songs, but that's not, that's outside the subject of what I'm going to talk about, okay? And it's not common, okay? Now, once again, I want to stress, I have never once thought about these technical things while working on a song. Never once. I'm only talking about it here um, to help make you aware of these things. Uh, song lyrics are different from poetry, which I'll talk about, I think, next time. Paul Simon has something uh, really wonderful to say about that. What I want to get across right now is that your lyrics need to have rhythmic elements to them that fit or maybe even define the rhythm of your chord progression. 
as you write your lyrics, it's really important to have some awareness of the rhythm of the words. Probably the biggest problem that I have seen with beginning songwriters is that they neglect this, which makes finding a melody, for example, much harder, let alone singing it, okay? They, they typically don't pay attention to the rhythm, the, the music of the words that they're writing, okay? Um, and uh, for me, the most common process, uh, once I have a chord progression, uh, and usually some kind of pro provisional rhythm, as I've talked about already, I might write, write a few lines of lyrics and try them out with the music, okay? Actually, hold on, I'm kind of misleading you a little bit. Most commonly, I have a progression with some basic rhythm, and I tend to play that in over and over for a while. I kind of burn it in to my hands and my head and my ears. This might be over the course of a few hours or a few days, you know? Sometimes even weeks, you know, I might have something written there in my notebook. Um, uh, but uh, uh, it's not usually that long before I put pen to paper uh, for lyrics. A recent example of this is from my most recent song called The Days. And um, I haven't recorded it yet, but I will and will include it in the comments below. Um, as I was playing with what became the chord progression, I, I was reading, so I had a chord progression actually for both a verse and, and a chorus, and I, I, I really didn't know what was going to become, uh, become of that. Um, anyway, while I was kind of working on that every day or so, I was reading the novel The Road by Cormac McCarthy, uh, which I highly recommend, by the way. He has a line, he, he's an interestingly poetic fiction writer. He has a line in it that kept going through my head, so much so that I had to, um, in the middle of the night, I wrote it down and I have a little app that I keep these kinds of notes in. And uh, the line is, the day to shape the days upon. And I'll let you think about what that means. I love the idea of it, but I think the reason that it was playing on a loop in my head was really the rhythm of it. Te technically, it's in iambic tetrameter, okay? Four of da-dum, 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 okay? That's music in, in a sentence, in, in a written line, okay? The day to shape the days upon, okay? It's a very musical line. And I feel certain that if I could ask Cormac McCarthy if he if that was intentional, at least in, in kind of his, the bones of his feelings as he was writing, to make some music with that line, I feel pretty sure he would say, yeah, yeah, that, that was part of that. Um, so anyway, I, as I said, I had the, uh, some chords and, and rhythm for a chorus and I just tried it out with those words and it did not work. It just didn't fit. It didn't fit. So now I could have adjusted the rhythm of, uh, what I was playing and it, it was just two chords, um, D and G, um, with a little hammer on the G. But instead, what I did was I shifted where I came in singing those words by an eighth note, and there it was. It was perfect. And, the, and it was perfect owing to the fact that there was already music in the lyric. So this is what I'm stressing. As you write your lyrics, make sure that there's rhythmic music in them, okay? That's the only way to help it mesh with the music of your chord progression and ultimately a melody, okay? So keep working and uh, experimenting. So uh, just to conclude today, I want to mention uh, 
how important it is to make some kind of record of what you're doing. Uh, early on before I got kind of seriously entrained in songwriting, um, I, I, <laughs> I played and created so many chord progressions with rhythm on my guitar that uh, kind of vaporized because I didn't write them down. And um, I have a pretty good memory, but very often I, I couldn't come back and recreate those the next day. There are many tools available for recording what you're writing down. First is my handy trusty notebook that pro contains progressions and lyrics. So as I'm sitting there at my table with my guitar writing, I'm, you know, I'm writing, <laughs> you can't see this really, but I'm writing lyrics and chord progressions. And, you know, I have my own kind of idiosyncratic uh, notation for my chord progressions. Uh, um, you know, things like this. Um, and, uh, you know, just invent something that works for you. It doesn't really matter uh, as long as you can uh, make sense of it, okay? So write things down. Um, uh, and by the way, for every progression that made ended up in a song, there are probably four or five or more in that notebook that didn't, okay? So I can't stress it enough, write things down. Um, unless you want to get into notating, and I'm way too lazy to do that, rhythm is harder to capture in, in a notebook. So this is where your uh, cell phone can come in or tablet. There are lots and lots of free recording apps in the App Store. Mine is very simple. It's just a voice recorder. I hit a button and there it is. So even if you only kind of uh, uh, half feel that you have something that sounds good or interesting to you, record it. Um, most commonly I'll record a rhythm with my chord progression, okay? From, uh, rhythm is what I'm most likely to forget, okay? Again, the chord progression can be written down, but I need to, I need some record of if I hit on some rhythm that sounds good to me, um, again, I, I'm not going to notate that, so I record it, okay? Um... And, uh, you know, I'm, right now I'm not talking about any kind of refinement of, of the music. For me, what I'm talking about, writing things in my notebook and recording um, a little bit on, on a, an app, um, is just uh, 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 to remember uh, usually the, the rhythm more than anything else. Once I do have a complete song, uh, I do record kind of a quick and dirty demo of it. Um, uh, <laughs> I've had situations, and that's important to remember kind of how it goes. I have had situations where uh, I, I neglected to record it, something that I wrote three or four weeks ago, and, and haven't played in yet. Um, uh, and it took me hours to figure out and kind of re remember how I played the song, how certain nuances went. Um, playing in a song is really, really, really important. I'm sure I'll come back to this again. But once I am pretty satisfied that I have a complete song, I will play it over and over and over and over again. There's a very famous story about um, um, Glenn Fry, who lived for a time in a house above Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown was on the first floor, Glenn Fry was on the second floor. And Jackson Brown was writing his song, uh, probably his biggest hit, Doctor My Eyes. And Glenn Fry heard him, he was playing it on piano. For weeks, night and day, all day, he, Glenn Fry said he heard Jackson Brown playing that song. And he was playing it in. He was figuring out nuance, nuances, little uh, variations on things. 
but mostly, I suspect, just really kind of playing it into his bones. And that's a really important thing as you uh, kind of get to the completion stage of your song. So we'll come back to that. Anyway, uh, I'll sign off for now. Next time we'll talk more about uh, kind of lyrics uh, themselves. Um, I have a few more things to say about that. And uh, uh, wishing you all uh, success in your songwriting and everything else. And until I see you again in a couple weeks, stay in tune.